In 2011, Korea was left stunned after a high school senior brutally murdered his own mother after an argument over his grades at school. What was even more disturbing was that he spent the next several months living with the corpse of his dead mother. Perhaps he still felt a sense of attachment despite the hatred he felt towards her. The relationship between children and their parents can become codependent, bound tightly by blood. In cases of patricide or matricide, the motives for the crime are often emotionally complicated, straddling a thin line between feelings of love and betrayal. At the end of the day, mothers and fathers are the pillars of their children's lives, who should be their main source of security and comfort. What kind of parents have you been to your children lately? This is the murder case of a mother in Seoul's Kuidong neighborhood. On November 22, 2011, Chi's father visited the home of his estranged wife, a woman by the surname Kim, who was living in Seoul's Kuidong neighborhood. The couple was going through a divorce and had been living apart for months, but he hadn't been able to get in touch with Kim for some time, prompting his visit. Following their separation, Ji's father had been sending around $1,000 a month for child support and phoned her in June of 2011 to ask about her whereabouts. But every time he called her, their son picked up instead, who continued to make excuses for her absence, saying she had left the home or gone on vacation. But Xi's father, who had been preparing documentation for his divorce proceedings with Kim, immediately became suspicious when he checked his wife's immigration records and realized that she had never left the country since 2004. Xi's father, who hadn't seen his family in months, finally visited their home five months later on November 22nd. After picking up a strange odor, and discovering that the master bedroom had been sealed off with adhesive, he called the fire department before forcing himself into the room. Inside, he found the remains of his wife's heavily decomposed body. Upon his father's appearance, he is reported to have asked his father, Dad, you're not going to abandon me no matter what happens, right? Ji was taken into police custody on November 23rd and charged with murder the following day on November 24th. Word of a high school senior murdering his own mother quickly spread, and the news soon topped headlines across Korea. A test conducted on Ji at the detention center found that he had an intelligence quotient of 131 on the Korean Wexler Adult Intelligence Scale, equivalent to a genius level IQ of 150. Ji was a gifted student who had won many awards at school competitions and received the top prize at a nationwide science contest, having achieved all this despite never attending a private academy. He had the best grades in his middle school on three separate occasions by scoring all A's in every subject. Ji also excelled in English achieving the highest level on his TEP score and winning many prizes at several international English competitions. During his freshman years in high school, Chi wanted to become a diplomat when he grew up, before changing his mind in his junior and senior years and aspiring to become a professor. In any case, Chi's exceptional academic performance made him a model student. However, Chi's family history was rather unhappy and dysfunctional. Chi's mother, Mrs. Kim, was raised by a single dad after her own mother passed away when she was just a middle school student. It was said that she was often ignored and mistreated by her father, who seemed to favor her younger brother. Perhaps as a result of that childhood experience, Mrs. Kim was said to have been very emotionally unstable. Mrs. Kim often threatened her husband with suicide from the early years of their marriage. She is also reported to have told her husband to do all the cooking and laundry, saying her hands were too precious for menial housework. Furthermore, she would pressure her husband to buy a luxury sedan despite the fact that he was just a street merchant, claiming that other people would look down on them if they drove a regular car. 
Mrs. Kim, who had been receiving hospital treatment for her depression and was prescribed sleeping pills, reportedly cut off all contact with her father after a major falling out. She had very limited social interactions, only occasionally meeting two of her friends and was described as a person with a debilitating social anxiety. Her husband eventually had enough and left the family to live with another woman when she was in his second year of middle school. Now left alone, Mrs. Kim developed an unhealthy obsession with her son. She told Shi that he was now the man of the house and had to take on the responsibility of becoming successful and making his father come crawling back. Mrs. Kim wanted Shi to study law at Seoul National University and became disturbingly obsessed with his academic performance. According to investigators, Mrs. Kim made Shi study in the living room from a very early age so that she could always keep a close eye on him. She was already studying 16 hours a day when he was only in the third grade. When he entered middle school, it was typical of him to study late into the night until 1 or 2 in the morning. After his father left their home, she was forbidden by Mrs. Kim to read books, study English, and play the piano, being instructed to focus solely on his grades at school. She eventually became worn out by his mother, who called his school one day and had a complete meltdown over the phone. When she came home late one day because he was playing basketball with his friends after school, Ji's punishment at the hands of his mother became even more severe starting in his second year of middle school. When he was in high school, Mrs. Kim found pornography on Ji's computer and ran straight to the school in the middle of class and slapped him in front of his teacher and classmates. At this point, Mrs. Kim was clearly becoming unhinged. Ji's grades would eventually suffer because of his anxiety over Mrs. Kim's abuses. He was ranked somewhere between 10,000 and 30,000 nationwide in a mock college entrance exam, which wasn't enough for admission to Seoul National University. Ji began forging his report card, starting from his freshman year of high school, to make it appear that he was scoring a perfect 100 in all his subjects and was the top-ranked student in his school. He also fabricated his mock college examination score to make it look like he was the 62nd ranked student in the entire country. But Mrs. Kim still wasn't satisfied. Her abuses got even worse as she began his second year in high school with Mrs. Kim buying a new baseball bat solely for the purpose of corporal punishment. With the baseball bat in hand, the intensity and frequency of her physical abuses became even more severe. It was said that her physical punishment of Chi would go on for up to seven or eight hours at a time. Chi would sometimes show up to school with a towel stuffed in his pants to soak up the blood after an entire night of beatings and no sleep. In an interview with the media, Ji's friends recalled seeing bloody bruises on his thighs and buttocks when they went to a public bath together. They also said his calves were noticeably thicker than those of a normal person because of all the swelling and bruising. Mrs. Kim's abuses became so unbearable that Ji took a pair of scissors and harmed himself in front of his mother, but it did not bring an end to the violence. After suffering years of abuse, Ji finally hit back one day, striking his mother with a rolling pin as he was being punished. Mrs. Kim had to get stitches on her head and a metal implant for a fractured right arm, but it did nothing to deter her from continuing to abuse Ji. Ji said that Mrs. Kim stopped feeling like a mother to him, and going to college to live separately from his mother became his only goal. Then came March 12th, which was only two days away from a parent-teacher conference at his school. Ji became terrified that Mrs. Kim would find out he had forged his grades to make it look like he was the 62nd ranked student in the nation when he was somewhere around a 4,000th place in reality. He dreaded the punishment that was sure to follow and decided that he wasn't going to let that happen. 
At the time, she had already gone three days without any food on the orders of his mother who wanted to teach him a lesson about appreciating the value of nourishment. On March 12th, from 11 p.m. to 8 a.m. the next morning, she was once again beaten all night for falling asleep while studying the day before. She had to endure a sleepless night once again and was beaten 200 times with a baseball bat and a golf club. She later testified that the complete lack of sleep left him in an extremely agitated and animal-like state and that he probably wouldn't have done what he did next only if he got in a little sleep. At 11 a.m. in the morning on Saturday, March 12, 2011, she took a knife from the kitchen, went to his mother who was sleeping in the master bedroom and stabbed her in the left eye. Mrs. Kim immediately started resisting and in a final desperate attempt to discourage her son, told Chi that he would never be able to live a normal life if he goes through with what he was about to do next. Chi told his mother, Mom, you just don't know it yet, but you're probably going to try and kill me tomorrow. It was always going to happen one day when I look at the path you are on. There are so many things you don't know about me, Mom. I'm sorry. She raised his knife and stabbed his mother twice in the neck, leaving her dead on the spot. She left her mother where she lay dead in the master bedroom over the weeks and months that followed. When Summer arrived, along with maggots and the stench of her decomposing remains, he glued the door of the master bedroom with an industrial grade adhesive to prevent the odor from escaping. Chi kept his mother's body hidden for eight months, and he was reportedly tormented by guilt and dreams of his mother when he slept at night. But Chi also found a small slice of happiness by inviting his friends over to his home to hang out, something that he was never allowed to do when his mother was still alive. In the months following the murder, Chi completely abandoned his studies and even skipped school during the exam period. He barely managed to take the college entrance exam only after his father found out about this and gave him a scolding. According to Chi, the reason why he didn't immediately turn himself in after murdering his mother was because of the girlfriend he had at the time. Chi had taken a liking to her since his freshman year in high school and started dating her in June after the murder of Mrs. Kim. He would get up at five in the morning and wait for his girlfriend in front of her house, giving her a ride to school on his bicycle. When Chi's girlfriend asked him why he was doing so poorly in school and skipping classes, Chi replied that he had no regrets in life and that he was willing to die for her. Chi told the investigators that if it wasn't for his girlfriend, he probably would have confessed to the murder right away and turned himself in. But he was so happy to be with his girlfriend and felt like he was living a dream that he did not want to wake up from. At the same time, however, Chi was also sending disturbing and cryptic text messages to his girlfriend, threatening that he would kill himself in front of her if she stopped dating him. His behavior was eerily similar to that of his mother, who routinely threatened her husband with suicide during their honeymoon period. Following his arrest, Chi asked his father to bring him a pizza to his prison cell and appeared calm when he took part in the later crime scene reenactment, raising many eyebrows among the public. This, coupled with the fact that he lived with the corpse of his dead mother for eight months, may lead some people to conclude that Chi was a psychopath. According to experts, however, these are also classic symptoms of dissociative identity disorder and chronic fatigue syndrome that are common in those who've experienced childhood abuse and trauma. In a nutshell, G may have been in a state of avoidance or denial in trying to live a normal life while thinking to himself that what's happened has happened and that there was no going back. When asked by the investigators why he never moved the body, Chi replied that he had no willpower to do anything at that point and didn't want to bother himself by thinking about the best way to dispose of the body. Experts pointed out that despite being plagued by guilt, 
deep within his subconscious, Chi's ability to suppress his emotions along with the sense of liberation he felt following the death of his mother may have allowed him to live a semblance of a normal life. However, Chi eventually broke down crying as he wrote his final statement and confession, even saying that he missed his mother. It was also discovered that Chi had visited Kamwon province with his girlfriend following the murder, perhaps suggesting that he was reminiscing about his mother with whom he traveled there when she was alive. The relationship between Chi and his mother wasn't always bad, and they had gone on trips to the coastal city of Kangneung during every winter break since he was young. According to neighbors, they were also seen holding hands and riding a bicycle together to go out for dinner on many occasions. The framed photographs of Chi and his mother were also left untouched where they were in the living room, even after Mrs. Kim was murdered. During the trial, Chi's attorney argued that he was acting in self-defense, pointing out that she was being beaten and had been starved for three days. However, the prosecution took an uncompromising stance, citing the serious nature of matricide. Prosecutors argued that Chi was not mentally impaired when he committed the crime, in addition to having a clear motive and behaving as normal following the murder. In light of these considerations, they argued that Chi deserved to be penalized heavily and asked the court for a 15-year prison sentence. According to Lee Jung-min, a prosecutor who was handling this case, the abuse that she was subjected to by his mother did present a case for a lighter sentence. However, Lee also added that it was difficult to consider Chi to be mentally unfit, given that psychological evaluations revealed no signs of any judgment-impairing mental condition, and the fact that he was very calm and composed when confessing the details of his crime. Despite this, the nine jury members of the court did find sympathy for Chi's plight. On August 20th, 2012, the court handed down its final ruling with the tragic circumstances surrounding Chi and his mother being taken into account. Chi was found guilty of matricide and was sentenced to a minimum prison term of three years and a maximum of three years and six months. Despite murder in the family carrying a minimum recommended prison term of seven years according to Korean law, she received a very lenient sentence. Even then, public opinion was so much in favor of Chi that some people were demanding that he be freed immediately. Regarding the three-year sentence, the court explained that Chi needed the time in detention to recover from his emotional wounds and move past his bad memories. While in prison, she wrote a letter to his friend that read as the following. Parents tell you to look far, but school parents tell you to look at only what's in front of you. Parents tell you to move forward, but school parents only tell you to get ahead of everyone else. Parents tell you to dream, but school parents don't even give you the time to dream. Perhaps he was thinking of his mother and what could have been if she hadn't fallen into harsh parenting. Chi served his three-year sentence and was released from prison on November 24, 2014. Miraculously, his girlfriend never lost faith and waited for him while he was in prison. It's been reported that they married and now have a baby together. Now that Chi has become a parent himself, it makes us wonder what kind of a father he is to his child, and if he's been able to put his past demons to rest. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.